Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. My name is Jay. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use Excel VBA to automate a reporting process. I know for a lot of companies and for different jobs, the reporting process are usually a little bit different. For example, for people who work in consulting industry, their main responsibility is mainly building uh, financial models or different forecasting models. For people who work in finance or accounting, maybe uh, you need to generate like monthly or weekly reporting. And we're going to learn how to maybe uh, take this data set and generate different reports uh, based on the unique items uh, can be uh, based on different regions, based on different dates, or based on different product name. So we're going to take this data set and write a VBA automation to populate individual reporting based on which metrics you're using. Now let's say I work in finance and every month I need to uh, break down uh, the entire data set individually. Let's say, let's do by product name. And we're going to basically uh, extract the unique items from the product name and we're going to basically apply other filter uh, to each product name and we're going to save the result to individual Excel file. Now let's go ahead and open the video window by going to the developer tab and click on Visual Basic. So this is going to be pretty useful when you want to learn how to automate your uh, monthly or weekly reporting process. So the first thing is you need to figure out what you want. So I want to uh, create a report that based on this product name, unique product name list, and I want to apply other filter to give me the data set that belongs to each product. And usually when I start writing the VBA automation, I'll start with the, the main program uh, subroutine. So let's call this, uh, actually that's fine, we'll call this a uh, main program. And next we need to figure out where do we want to save the, the output. So I create this uh, reporting automation folder and I'm going to uh, create another folder. So I'm going to call this uh, output and we're going to save all the individual Excel file under this output folder. So I'm going to grab this uh, directory path and outside the main program subroutine, I'm going to create a public constant variable. Now let's call this uh, output folder path a string and we'll paste the, the uh, directory path. Now let's go back to the uh, Excel file. And so our worksheet name is raw data. And I'm going to uh, create my objects and variables. So I'm going to actually going to create my variables outside the main program first. And so these are the objects and variables that can be shared across different subroutines. So I'm going to code this uh, object WS route data as worksheets and I also need the last row uh, variable and next I'm going to create a collection object and I'm going to call this uh, collection object collection unique list because I want to make this uh, automation dynamic so I don't want this automation to restrict to just one column I want the automation to be able to apply to any of these uh, fields now under the main program, so I'm going to uh, create my variables that can only be used within the main program subroutine. The first variable I'm going to create is the instance variable. And I'm going to declare the variable data type as long. And next I'm going to create a workbook uh, object variable. So we're going to uh, construct our WS route data worksheet object as this workbook that worksheets and followed by the worksheet name. And here I'm going to empty out the uh, WS route data object. So within the route data worksheets, and we're going to figure out the last row of value first. So we can do that by using the, the syntax that sales, rows, counts, and followed by the column index that we're going to use to determine the last row value. So I'm going to use column A to uh, figure out the last row number. And 
and here I'm going to insert if condition to do a uh, just a, a check. So if two is greater than last row, then we know that there's no data within this uh, route data worksheet. We can just X out the, the main program. Otherwise, I'm going to create my collection unique list object. Just new collection. So we're going to use the collection unique list uh, object to store the unique list items. And here I'm going to empty out the collection unique list when we finish um, executing the, the process. So usually when I generate the unique list uh, assigned to the collection, I like to use a separate subroutine to do that. So let's call this uh, subroutine unique list. And within this uh, subroutine, I'm going to have a parameter. So I'm going to call this parameter uh, collection, a COL, a collection. So here, since we declare our uh, WS route data worksheet object outside the, the main program, that means we can access the, uh, the object uh, with other uh, subroutines as well. Here I'm going to create a variable called row number as long. And here I'm going to loop uh, from <coughs> row number two to the last row. And I'm going to use the error resume next. Uh, so basically I'm going to ignore any uh, error that occurs because all I care about is uh, storing the unique items to the, the collection uh, object. So here I'll type collection unique list dot add and I'm going to add the unique items based on column K. So which is the product name column. And I'll do dot sales, row number followed by the column index dot value. And here for the key, so it must be a string. I'll use the convert string function to convert the value to a string data type. And that's it for the unique list uh, subroutine. Now we create the unique list subroutine. Now we can go ahead and code the subroutine. So code unique list. And we'll provide the collection object, so which is collection underscore unique list. Here I'm going to say for instance from the first instance uh, of the from the unique list from the collection unique list uh, items that counts. I'm going to uh, uh, first of all set the auto filter to false. That will make sure that when I start the auto filtering process, uh, all the data set will be available to me. And next, I'm going to uh, figure out the data set data range. So my data set is going to be from A1 all the way to uh, N. So column N is my last column. And I'll concatenate it with the last row value. And that auto filter. So our field is going to be column K. So I can just type K1 dot column. And we want to provide the column index value as an integer, not the string. For the criteria, we want to provide the product name. So here we can use the collection underscore unique list dot item. And we'll provide the index value, which is the instance value. So this line right here is going to apply the auto filter based on the product name. And once the auto filter is applied, we can basically go ahead and just copy the data set. So I'm going to use a1.current region dot copy. Here I'm going to create a brand new Excel workbook. So I'll do set wb is equals to workbooks dot add. 
in front of this line right here was still copying the data set so I can go ahead and uh, grab the blank workbook and I'll paste the data to the first worksheet dot paste and next I'm going to save the Excel workbook so for the file name it's going to be this output folder path and I'm going to uh, separate the file name by uh, the product name so here I'm going to insert underscore character and followed by the product name so to get the product name we'll take the collection in English the item and we'll provide the, uh, the instance value and for the extension, so I'm going to save that as an Excel, regular Excel file. And close the file. So I'm now going to save the change because um, from this line right here, we we'll actually already saved the Excel file. Now, let me just pause for a second. So if you look at uh, the entire main program uh, process, we're actually just writing code to replace uh, the manual process that's it so to be honest it's not seem really complicated and here I'm going to empty out the WB object and I'm going to reset the auto filter so to do that I'm going to set the auto filter mode to false and lastly I'm going to uh, insert message box once the, the automation is uh, finished so I'll say uh, macro complete something like that and that's everything now if i just go to debug and compile to make sure that there's no typo in this thing so here i made a typo and let me compile again now this time there's no error message so i'm just going to go back to the excel file now let me open this output folder and i'll put this excel side by side Now if I go to the view tab and click on macros and I'm going to choose the macro in this workbook. So here's our main program. Now if I run it and so here I get a, an error message. Oh, so this should be auto filter mode. Now let me try again. So if I go to view macros and run the main program. Alright, so that took a while, but it finally finished. Now let me close the message box. Now let's open a couple Excel files just to do a quick validation. Uh, I'm not going to go to all the Excel file, but if I just highlight all the file, and I can see that I have 50 reporting uh, got generated. So imagine you have to do this manually by hand uh, 50 times, that go to the same uh, manual process, apply the auto filter, Copy the table, open a brand new Excel workbook and paste the data and save the file, close the file and repeat the process again for 50 times. For me, that's going to drive me insane. But now let me open uh, the first Excel file. So here's the, the Excel file. And if we just do a quick check, so based on the value in column K and we'll get the correct product name and this is also the correct table now let me do one more so I'll just check one more file just to double check and this time I'm going to uh, use this maybe something maybe this one pizza, ov pizza oven uh, excel file and for this report uh, the table is a little bit larger So if we just take a look at column K and these are all the pizza oven records and the table looks good to me. 
So this is everything for this tutorial. And I'll post the VBA code and this Excel file on my website. And I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave your question in the comment section below. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.